There's an infinite number of universes out there. In many of them, there is a podcast by us. In one of them, it's good. Please enjoy. If you could have the characteristics of a horse, like if you could be horse boy, and you could take on one characteristic of a horse and thus have be horse boy, what would that be as, as a superpower? It's head. It's my head now. And then my head is transported onto the horse. Okay, so the plot of this Hollywood hit <laughs> is in a horrible accident. My head is exchanged with the head of a horse, <laughs> thus creating horse boy and man horse, the villain of the story. <laughs> He has, I have all the innocence and compassion of a horse and all the dexterity of a human, but the horse has all the dexterity of a horse, but all the malevolence and evil of man. <laughs> and we frequently face off in epic, epic, um, like we don't fight directly because like, I'd, like I as horse boy would just, you know, I'd, I'd win, I guess. Although, I don't know, he would have the kicks, <laughs> I'd have the punches, but I feel mostly he'd just use like. Gold, like Rube Goldberg style contraptions with lasers and stuff to like attack me, but they'd be horse themed all the time. So you're talking like alternate reality Bojack Horseman, where the the show Bojack Horseman yeah. is about a horse with a human head. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh man, that's also another great show. That's terrifying. That's the kind of show if hu- if horses were the the superpower instead of humans, and we were like the pack the pack animal like eating grass in the field. That'd be the show they made. Horse bodies with human heads, and it'd be called <laughs> it'd be called humaning or humaning about human stuff, peopling. But yeah, but yeah. Welcome to But Yeah with Eamon and Zeb. I'm Eamon. And I'm Zeb. And it's the 26th of April in our special void that we live in that they let us out every week. The exclusive time pocket that we skip by seven days each week. We just sort of sit here in the void and every seven days, look, look, it feels like one day to us. Or we only really exist for about an hour and every hour it's a new, a week later, a different date. That's how we, that's our lives. To me, it feels more like that one Black Mirror episode where we've been made into AI clones of ourselves and just every thousand years, this day rolls by. So, we've been sitting here since like a thousand years ago, um, just sort of resting on these thoughts, waiting for this next day to come up. And they told us what it is and it's Help a Horse Day, April 26th. In in all those thousands of years, though, we never wrote a plan. (laughs) Like, it just went, we just just went, oh, we should... Oh, yeah, nah. We really no, should. we never figured out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we've got a thousand years. Oh, man, we really should. <laughs> do, 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 boop, and then bah, last bah, minute, bah, the, like bah, the last bah, half bah, hour before bah. the thousand years are up, we were like, oh, get it. Quick. <laughs> throw, throw some things. Let's throw, pretend. Look busy. Smash keys. It's, it's help a horse day. Help some horses. So it's a definitively help a horse day. We put out a poll on our Twitter at But Yeah Pod, and the options were Pretzel Day, Thank You Thursday, Hug an Australian Day, which was reasonably popular, or Help a Horse Day, which is obviously the correct answer. It'd be kind of weird for us to celebrate hug a, hu- like Hug an Australian Day because we're Australian. Like, I mean, I guess I can self hug, or I can hug literally every person I see around me. Um, I don't want to do that for a whole day. It's a pretty weird time of year to be, like, hugging people as well, because everyone's sick. It's that time. I don't know if that extends to America, but here in Australia, it's that it's that edge of autumn. Edge of I think it actually summer. does cross over, because as we're leaving summer into winter, they're coming into spring. Ah, which is the most diseased, life-difficult. <laughs> the most disease-riddled. Yeah. That's what everyone associates with spring is you've got plants bursting out of the ground. You've got the potatoes are ready. You've got flowers are coming up. You've got the birds spreading all the diseases. <laughs> I guess you've got hay fever and stuff floating around. Um, you, may hear it in my, mm. you may hear it in my register. I, too, have, a con- I have um, contracted the, uh, the little life forms that get inside your throat and dance. I have some of those. Yeah. I feel fine. Like that one Adventure Time episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What we need to do is shrink down to a microscopic level and then go down into my throat and, I don't know, individually battle each germ cell. 
that is aggressively attacking my music. <laughs> um, I wouldn't ask anyone to do that. We could shrink down horses with us, and we'd have something to ride through your digestive tract. I guess. Yeah, yeah that that'd be that'd be on theme. Though that's not really helping the horses. That's horses helping us. I think this is more of a day where we shrink down. And go inside the horse's organs and, I don't know, give it a scrub. <laughs> That's not- give it a bit of a scrub. <laughs> I'm sure horses have dirty, dirty organs from all the all the grass. It's, it's dirty. <laughs> this is a very mean, mean way to talk to horses on this, on this day that it is meant to be helping them. I mean, it in a nice way. I'm not, I'm not, I'll, I'll get their consent before I shrink down and enter their organs. Like we all have bit, we all have di- we all have dirty organs sometimes, and like I'd I'd love someone to give my organs a good scrub, if it didn't hurt. I, I assume it wouldn't hurt. <laughs> Maybe depends how much they're shrunk. If they're shrunk down to like palm size, I don't want that to get into my lungs and give it a scrub. That'd yeah. hurt. But you know. So let me give you the official description. No horsing around. Today is an opportunity for you to be a good neighbor on Help a Horse I Day. This, I hate this day already. <laughs> Horses continue to be both a popular pet as well as serving as hardworking farm animals. Would you call horses a pet? I Yeah, I had that exact thought when you said the word pet. I, I would... I mean, yeah. I mean, I mean, yeah. yeah. But also, I feel like, like it's I feel- so large that at a certain point they become just a friend. Yeah, like I feel like a pet is something you can keep in your house to some extent. But I mean, like, it's not necessarily true. Like, if you bred a really big dog, it, you could still call people would still call that a pet. I think there's like a trigger in my head that says if something is larger than you, it can't really be your pet. I feel it's how many pets you- like, can you actively pet it? <laughs> like, can you- can you pat it? And that makes sense. I mean, you can- you can pet a horse. You definitely can. You can't pet it, like, on the back like you would a, a small dog. Like, you can't run your hand. Can you- I think yeah. the definition of a pet is based on can you run your hand from its head all the way to its- like, the very back of its tail in one smooth motion. I mean, all that requires is an animal to have a spine, though, like- if 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 it's got multiple segments that like disconnect, then you can't do it. But like, you could do that with anything. You could do that with a human. <laughs> Are they a pet? There's other there's other exclusions. Yeah, yeah. I guess that's just one one important one. I don't know. I had horse. It's not all things with spines can be pets. Yeah. Well, or can they? <laughs> it's not the reason that they're pets or not anyway. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. I had horses growing up. Um, my mum used to do show horses and stuff, so we had heaps growing up, like eight. Eight horses? Um, no one- I never really thought of- Real- these. what? Yeah, yeah, eight horses. You had, like, 20 cats, you had eight horses. Well, like, that was before I moved. You had, like, a big old pile of armadillos. I lived on a farm, man. Back in the day, they were all- We had- I had one dog, 20 cats, uh, eight horses. You ate the horses? Pigs. Um, chickens. <laughs> We didn't eat the horses. They ate the chickens. Man, horses can be jerks, though. They used to, like, they chased the chickens and stuff. <laughs> like Chickens are fun to chase. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but, like, not for the chicken. <laughs> it's terrifying for the chicken. Like, horses aren't meant to be predators. They're supposed to be, like, all, like, avoid you. Horses can be crazy aggressive, though. We had one which just kept busting all the fences. I mean, in the horse's defense... Like, it was kept in fences. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, fences are made to be busted. Do you want to know how to celebrate this day? As recommended or as determined? Well, let's let's check the recommendation first. What, what's the site say? So, Help a Horse Day is your opportunity to send a donation to an equine care charity of your choice. Exciting. Oh, that's nice. Or share an apple or a carrot with a local horse you know. <laughs> I like that too. Let's Let's really break down that wording. Okay, let's start with share. So, if I said you were going to share an apple with me. So, I I have to eat part of the apple. You have to eat half the apple at maximum. Um, Is it kind of like a, like, what's that movie with the dogs in the romance and they eat the spaghetti? Oh, um, Breaking Bad. The lady in the pooch, pooch in the- 
Oh. Lady in the Tramp. Pooch 2, still tramping. Yeah, although that that was a romantic movie. So I guess, like, you're not romancing the horse, ideally. No. But I don't know. Maybe although if you want to, a- that's fine. If you want to have a romantic friendship with this horse. But yeah, share an apple or a carrot with a local- As long as the horse reciprocates. As long as the horse is like, no, back. Um, so share an apple or a carrot with a local horse you know. So it's got to be okay. in your town. Oh, so it can't be a stranger horse. It's got to be a horse you know. It like, has to be one you know. You have to uh, talk to it before. You know that it's safe and that it wants these apples or carrots. You know it doesn't have any allergies to apples and carrots. Um, yeah, yeah, because that that could be a that could be a problem. Wonder if wonder, wonder if horses like bananas. Probably not. I feel yeah, they need something with a crunch, don't they? You couldn't, couldn't. They like something with that snap, <laughs> like celery. It's gonna have that. Yeah, they'd like celery, I think, but it's not on the list here. Onions. Alternatively, <laughs> sign your name to a petition demanding, demanding better care for these faithful, four-footed friends who have served us so well over the centuries. All they need um, is a hand. Um, I mean, after I all, most of them are at least ten hands high. What to enjoy a better life? So th- these horses need hands. They're about ten hands high. How were your horses ten hands high? Yeah, I mean, look at the size of your hand, and then consider the size of a horse. Like they got a ten hands isn't that high. So one hand is the size is how many hand? A hand is one tenth of a horse. Yeah, well, not all horses. How many hands tall are you? Do you think? Well, I'm gonna hand measure myself right now. Eight and a half. Wow, yeah, there's a horse as taller than my head. That's too... No. Oh, I guess their head part, like, not their back. Like, their back that end would, isn't... That would be a large ten horse. Hands, but their head end is. <laughs> that would be a large horse. Some horses are huge. My um, neighbor back in the day had Clydesdales. Mm-hmm. They were huge, but they have the cool little flares on their hooves. It's like they're always having a disco. They're always ready to launch in case of emergency. Right. On that note, um, I mean, it describes the horses of having four feet. Imagine a horse with four feet. They have hooves. Imagine, like, <laughs> a horse with four human feet. I demand this image. And that would, <laughs> I'm sure a horse would hate that, probably. I don't know. I'm sure there's a reason they have hooves. I'm sure they're useful. There is. Um, but yeah, I would love to see a picture of a horse with four feet, like just human feet. That would be terrifying and I, I need to see it. Or, or, ten, or ten hands. Think of the problems with horses having like human feet. One, you got toes that can be stomped on. <laughs> Two, you got toes that can't be scratched in between because you don't have those fingers to really get in there. Three... You got a two-parted foot that can be like you can have like your ankle rolled, or like the the foot can like bend badly. That's probably better than a that's probably better than a hoof though, because I mean a hoof is essentially one big toe with a giant fingernail. Yeah, it's the perfect. It's the most optimal thing for a creature that needs to run fast. It's like having a <laughs> like having a giant thumb for a foot. <laughs> like imagine that. Hey, if you want to get technical, ah. Uh... Horses are one big hand and the legs are their fingers. Oh, only four fingers, though. Well, you could count the head as a finger. I don't. I mean, I guess it's it has less joints than the legs. And it is the one that does the most work in terms of manipulating the world. Just like a thumb. So this was, co- this, this was covered by Mabim Bam when someone randomly told them that horses' legs are technically fingers. Are they technically fingers? The hooves are the vestigial fingers left over um, from when horses did have fingers. Oh, wait, what? So, it, the, their hands evolved back to get rid of the fingers. Let me just send you a scientific image. Kind of like the thumbles um, from Spy Kids. <laughs> I think we've talked about the thumbles before. How do they keep? I've been seeing them a lot lately. <laughs> I, the thumb, thumb, the thumb I, I keep posting the thumbles every now and then. Uh, let me just send you this. I think this is from a biological journal of medicine of horses. It's just going to say, is this just going to say horses totally have one thumb? Oh, God. Wait, what? you said it was from. <laughs> we'll post that to Twitter uh, just so everyone knows. But just I'll describe the image. 
There is this majestic horse here. Looks ready to run out to pasture, um, except that its legs are human fingers. <laughs> Big ones. That's beautiful. Big ones. Um, but, like, I guess it does. It looks functionally the same as a horse leg, though. So, like, maybe they're better. Like, yeah. You don't get less mud caught, caught in that giant toenail that they have. One good thing- you know, Also, I got a lot more mobility. Um, but back to what we were covering- because this has been covered. Well, one good thing about having um, human feet on horses is that like, shoes are less permanent. <laughs> like, you don't have to nail your shoe in. You just put it on as a horse. I'm sure I'd love that. Imagine a horse. Imagine how fast they could run if they could just chuck on a two pairs of Nikes. Yes, you get that Nike branding on that horse. <laughs> you, get those air, you get those air pumps with that soft gel cushioned sole. Yeah. And it's just going to be, be just, it's going to be so much easier to run fast. I think that's how we need to help horses. We need to invest in the local foot growing uh, biology alteration with a track to market shoes because it's just better for posture. How about, yeah, how about this? Instead of the, like, for years, the only shoes available for horses have just been these weird metal rings. Imagine trying to wear those on your feet. You wouldn't like that. Oh, you no. can't run fast in that. No, I wouldn't. I'd hate that. Even just on my fingers. Starting 2019, all horses get Nikes, normal shoes. Yeah. Comfy shoes with a little bit of grip and bounce to them. Yeah. These horses are going to be very fast when they get these bouncy shoes. Yeah, it'd be great. What if they're too fast, though? They start jumping over everything. Oh, no. This is terrifying, actually. But we're here to help. This is- What if we well, put them out on the track and they learn to run even faster and then they break out of the track? Like Star Wars I think- Eight. When Rose and Finn went on their horse adventure and let loose those nasty creatures. Yeah. The gross space horses. There may be negative consequences to helping these horses out with these bouncy shoes, but like, this is day isn't about- the consequences of helping horses day. It's not that day. This is helping horses day. We're, today is the time to act. And my action is sending an email to Nike that just in the title, it says horseshoes, question mark, a new concept. Yeah. And in, this, in, the, in the, the body of the email, it says, dear Nike, I'm writing to you, uh, James from Nike who I looked up on the Nike website, to tell you about a cool new concept, which is going to be more efficient for horses to run in the races? Question <laughs> mark. Nike shoes for horses. We can put those good shoes on them and they'll be faster. We can also do a Nike blanket for the horses while they sleep? Question <laughs> mark. Please send, sh- please send me horseshoes in the shape of good, fresh, bouncy Nikes. Amen. <laughs> um, and just uh, above, not as in like higher ranking, but because it came just after your email, then it would then be higher on the inbox. It would be um, horseshoes plus question mark. And it would be like, hi, hi, James. Um, <laughs> I really like the idea of horseshoes as well. I just want to jump on that train. Um, but what if, what if we innovate further and kind of like those, those cup shoes that you can walk be taller on like the stilt shoes or like those springo shoes what if horse but springo shoes and then they can jump to all those difficult high branches where they can't eat the grass from question mark love zeb (laughs) (laughs) um the problem with that though is you're sort of being reductive to nike's brand which is all their shoes are springy shoes by design Extra- they help you jump to those high branches no matter which, which shoes you're wearing. Yeah, but I want, I want them to be visually large springs, like full on, <laughs> like visible, like, 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 a, like a part out of a motorbike, but those really big metal ones. Yes, springs are great. I don't see how they're going to help the horse, though. Well, I mean, let's leave that to the horse to decide. We'll give them the opportunity to use springo okay. shoes. If they choose not to springo shoes, well, that's, that's their choice. In terms of actually helping the horse yeah. or finding out what horses need help with, I do have some Facebook poll answers. I posted in our Facebook group, um, the But Yeah Podcast Appreciation Group, a poll that reads, My horse is a powerful behemoth of independence, but he could definitely use some help with his emotional well-being, 
fighting this man. <laughs> I don't know what man that is. Just, Someone added that. Just this man. Oh, hang on. There is an image attached to it. Oh. It's a knight's helmet with a bunch of cigarettes in the holes. <laughs> <laughs> Medieval <laughs> Why is the horse fighting the man? <laughs> He's a knight the Horses do hate cigarettes I've heard that Wait wasn't there, wasn't there Wasn't there a horse character mascot For one of the cigarette brands at one point? Was that real? Oh my god Am I imagining that? Horse cigarettes My god with cigarettes for horses That's not what we want That's not helping horses Crazy horse cigarettes yeah, so many horse cigarettes. There's just unlimited. I guess that's why horses hate them now because they like it's overdone. Well, yeah. not so much overdone, but all these horses got sick from having to smoke during the advertisements. There's a big, there's a big recoil against them. I guess by the horse the horse com- union the horse commu- community, the horse, the horse, <laughs> the horse, horse community. Yeah, these cigarettes are ruining our image. <laughs> The Crazy Horse Company supports all manner of healthy horse living. Nay! These cigarettes are ruining our families! Man, that absolutely... That's the horse rally. Just like, I say nay to this. Not tomorrow. And then occasionally the cigarettes go... Not not next week. To nay! (laughs) On behalf of the Crazy Horse Cigarettes Company, we'd like to issue uh, an apology to everybody. And the horses are like, yes! (laughs) What's horse for yes? Yes. N- yeah. Mm, yes. <laughs> yeah. Mm, yes. <laughs> um, so another option was using his DVR to record the latest episode of Neighbors. This is just sort of a joke encapsulated in itself. That's a pretty good one. Nobody watches Neighbors anymore. Not even the horses. I've heard. They really lost the horse community after they killed off the one horse character as well. Yeah, that was a mistake. Who was the horse character? Old horsey. You remember the horse in the horse from Neighbors? That every time someone said like a funny thing, it'd pop in and be like, Haha, "I'm a horse." Neighbors. <laughs> exactly. Like that. Same neighbors joke. was originally a show about a horse, and he was there for like a bunch of the seasons. But everybody loves good neighbors, sort of thing. <laughs> that was the joke from the original writers, and then eventually. They killed him off for some reason. It was, uh, I guess, just mod- the modern the modern um, teen didn't understand the complex humor that was that joke. Puns stopped being so cool, especially when repeated. God, for, that could neighbor repeated for twenty years. Neighbors could have easily been the fake name they used for BoJack Horseman's show. Like neighbors, yeah. yeah, yeah. Horsing around isn't bad either, though. Like they didn't necessarily go wrong. Yeah, but you could also just call... Yeah, you could call the hit Australian TV show Neighbours horsing around. Or maybe they're getting there. Maybe there's another Australian spin on their show called Neighbours. Ah, I miss the horse from Neighbours. Man, I miss I miss Bojack Horseman. Surely that's coming up again soon. Everybody's favourite hmm. um, healthy horse. That's a horse that needs some help. So the next most popular one is applying suntan lotion, which I guess horses probably do have a lot of trouble with. Yeah, I mean... It's difficult, really. Especially when you're a horse and you don't have any hands. You need to stay that deep chestnut brown. Yeah. But they're you, actually, you can't just stay out in the sun all day. They're actually like a pale, like, a pale, like you know, Caucasian colour. <laughs> no! No! Horses are not a pale, like, they're like cream sk- colour always. And then they just get... Yeah, they're not even... Cr- coloured. And their skin's really smooth. <laughs> like... That's not hair. That's just no. the texture of their of their tan. Like you know, when you see pictures of like dogs after a real yeah. close haircut, all horses are like that. They just get coloured <laughs> in, and you don't realise until you're up close how smooth that yeah, skin you is. Actually, touch it. It just feels like human skin. Yeah, you're like, oh, wait, there's no hair here. It's just painted on. Wait, this is just a human. Help. <laughs> I've been <laughs> nay something. Um, so the most popular option was moving into his new apartment. He has a lot of stuff. I mean, everyone needs some help with that. Like, that's that's actually quite helpful. I'd love that. Yeah, ever. I think everyone does need help mm. moving, but particularly horses. Yeah, well, mainly the- for one because no arms. <laughs> for one, uh, it's 2018, and there are no vehicles for horses yet. <laughs> they have to be carted in the back of like a trailer. Yeah, well. 
Like an animal. They call them horse <laughs> like an animal, yeah. They call them horse cars, horse carts. <laughs> I mean if I could I mean are we are we just move are we just moving that way in general though? Rather than giving horses cars, we're sort of moving in the direction of giving humans carts to be in to get carted around in. I mean they have apartments. Like Uber horses. We're allowing them to have leases on apartments and jobs, but we're not gonna the manufacturing companies aren't gonna make a car for horses. Yeah. It's ridiculous. I don't know. Maybe they maybe they just have a lot of road rage. They don't like driving much. It just freaks them out. Yeah, maybe they maybe Ford has been doing the tests on their closed circuit tracks and the horses just keep running drivers off the road. <laughs> really aggressively. <laughs> like this horse has perfect handling of this of this car. Like he's driving around perfectly. It's not it's not it's not a mistake. He's running everyone. He's running off the road intentionally. <laughs> he's pushing our human drivers into the pits. <laughs> they haven't actually invented AI smart cars. What's happening is that's the horses, and they, they're like, <laughs> there's little horses driving it, but like they're sort of shielded from the front. Ah, uh, so when they say this new Tesla automatic. This new Tesla self-driving car has one horsepower, but that's all you need. Yeah. What they really mean is there's a horse in the trunk yep. doing all the steering. From the back. <laughs> just, that's not really independent for horses, though. That's them just being taxi. Like, it's just, it's more of a revival of the old style job of a horse where they drove humans around. Right. So, for a while, <laughs> machinery took the horses' jobs from them. And they're trying to take them back. And now... <laughs> Now we're getting them back. Yeah. So if you ever jump in a self-driving car, you should know that if you pop open the back and you have a look in there where the engine is, there's a horse in there doing all the steering and you can say hello. You can um, share a carrot or an apple with it. Yeah, they love that. As long as you get um, friendly with it and get to know each other, that's all cool. Mm, Sounds good. Um, so, yeah, I, I love when people answer my Facebook polls. It's the best. <laughs> yeah. Because I did one answer just to start it off, yeah. which never gets picked, which I just wrote, it needs help with those taxes. <laughs> I think I added one as well, but I don't remember it. That immediately sank to the bottom, <laughs> <laughs> which is good. I like seeing everyone's answers. It's awesome. Yeah. Uh, what did I write? I forget. It was something you wrote, like that. Something, he needs, something dumb. He needs help with his emotional well-being. Yeah. The two unfunniest mm. idiots <laughs> posting on the polls were us. Yeah. The people who created the polls. I mean, I voted for me. I didn't vote for you. I didn't vote for you. I didn't vote for you either, so whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is as good a place as any. Speaking of, like, helping horses, um, our product today may actually interest you. Yeah, let's head over to the ad zone. Are you tired of getting home, taking your shoes off, knowing you just have to put them back on again in the morning? This foot odor and the stink that comes from having something encapsulating your feet all day. There must be a better way. Horseshoes for human. You need metal rings nailed to your feet. Metal, metal never smells. Metal is easy to clean. All you have to do is dip it in the bath. Just dip them in the water. Give them a bit of a toothbrush now and then. Treat them like teeth, metal teeth that are on your feet. And you'll never have to wear shoes again. It'll be absolutely marvelous. But Zeb, how am I going to maintain my amazing fashion style with these shoes? Surely there's only one variety. No, you're in luck. There's multiple types of metal. There's standard metal, gun metal, darker metal, slightly lighter metal. And if you're rich, gold which is really malleable and just bends immediately and is actually a horrible thing. Alternatively, stickers. Little flames on the side of your your feet because there's not a lot of room on the metal. Or buy our companion product, feet paint. (laughs) (laughs) You have, with, with the wearing of horseshoes, you have more freedom to stylize and really, really get in there and get better with your feet. Take the permanence and greet the exact opposite of a new foot style every day. You're going to love these shoes. You never have to, you're never going to have to wash your feet again. They're self-cleaning. They're louder when you walk down the hallway so people know who's coming. They know it's you. 
That person with the powerful shoes. Would you rather be described as, here he comes at a canter. Oh, he go- he's going off for a gallop. Well, these shoes are for you. <laughs> gallop through the business day with these human, with these horseshoes for humans. Once you put them on, you will never give them up. You'll never put them down and they will never hurt you. Enjoy these shoes. They may hurt you. And as we always say to the FDA when they want to investigate our product. Nay. (laughs) Nay way, Jose. What is this, a crossover episode? All right, we're back. What did you do on your break, Zeb? Oh, you know, I did the usual thing. I went and stood in the cupboard. Nice. I hate that question so much. <laughs> I didn't do anything. We didn't have a break. We did. We, it's been like five hours. I went away. I wrote a movie. I went and hugged a horse. That's not my fault that you don't do anything interesting in your break. We don't recommend hugging horses. They generally are anxious creatures. I taught my horse to and hug they- me. By feeding it carrots and or apple slices. Step one, here's how to teach your horse to hug you. I like to think it has a little contraption on the front of it, like a, like a metal bar that sort of goes over its neck and over its torso and two like robotic arms come out with like gloves on them, like cartoonish Disney gloves. And with those arms and hands, it can hug you. Right. So you want it to hug you like a six legged insect. Yeah. The danger is they start to use those arms for other things. Yeah, like playing poker. Like stabbing. <laughs> like slapping you. Playing cards and gambling away all yeah. their money. Ho- horse gambling. Uh, so if you want to teach your horse to hug you, put it in a stall. Don't tie it down, though. Stand on its side with your back to his shoulder. Hold a treat in your hand and let it smell it. Say hug. Bring the treat slowly back towards his barrel. And reward him with the treat to praise him. Barrel. After a few repetitions, you should be able to eliminate the treats. The horse has a barrel? The horse, the horse has to have a barrel for this to work. I think the belly of the horse is the barrel. Uh, no, I like to think of it as an actual barrel that the horse owns. Much like an oyster's pearl. <laughs> so this article that I was reading written in 97, uh, it's essentially how to trick your horse into hugging you when you say hug because you're you're training it to look for a treat when you say hug while you're standing next to it and then after a while you stop giving it the treats and you just say hug and it's like i'm gonna get a treat and you never do you just give it a hug what that's called in psychology is classical conditioning and it's how all all animals are trained (laughs) by tricking them with food ha classic conditioning at it again it's always there Tricking, tricking things and eating, not eating, doing things. Humans too. Basically, whatever, anything you've ever learned in your life boils back to, can I have a treat? And then they stop giving you the treat after a while. You go, well, I guess I have to get money. See, that was <laughs> that was exactly. my break. Was this article, this this interesting yeah. yet kind of sad article, which is to say, horses, most of them probably don't know how to hug. They just want a treat, and you're not giving it to them. Yeah, I mean... Why do we always eliminate the treats after we treat the animal... After we teach the animal the trick? Well, because it's not really... They're not really doing the trick then, are they? Like, whenever if whenever they do it, they, they're eating the food. They're not really hugging you. Like, it feels like they're just using you. Like how you're using them for your entertainment. <laughs> yes. Because you flip it around after a certain point and you stop buying the treats. But, like... Plus, treats are expensive. I guess it's just a mirage for whoever's watching. You have to occasionally still give them treats too, otherwise they'll stop doing it. Yeah. But you have to do it in a way that is unpredictable, because if you consistently give them treats like every second time, they figure that out, and then they'll only hug you every second time. There's actually a thing kind of related to this in app development lately. There's this company that um, is doing... A machine learning sort of software where you're rewarded just enough every yeah. so often that you get that sweet, juicy dopamine yeah. release. They call it intermittent reinforce. They call it an inter- intermittent reinforcement schedule. Um, it's the weirdly, the paradoxically, the best one to use because what happening psychologically is you go and one might get a treat, 
But if you start to expect the treat, you get kind of, you start to get entitled and go, I want the treat. And then you get angry if you don't get it. Or you go, I know when I'm going to get it and I'm only going to do it when I'm going to get it. But if it's, if you're unsure, they did these experiments with mice basically with buttons and pellets. And if like it only released a pellet every 10 times or every like minute or so, they'd only click it every minute. They wouldn't click it outside of that. Mm -hmm. But then if it like sometimes released a pellet, pellet every one minute. They'd start just clicking it the whole time, constantly. Mm. Essentially, like I'm probably, I'm probably butchering that a little, but just, it's just a little, little, little trick, a little exploit in, not just human psychology, just in the brain. Little life hack. Yeah, and mobile phone games are notorious for it. They call them Skinner boxes because um, Skinner was the guy, the psychologist who came up with all of this sort of stuff. Um, but mobile phones love that stuff. That's why whenever you're playing a regular game, even if it's just like Uno or something. It's like you need points to keep playing or something like that. Oh, you can only play five times a day unless you do the thing. Give us money. Do, 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 do. That was the whole big thing with that, um, that Star Wars thing last year where they, um, were making people, they couldn't let, wouldn't let people play the game more than three hours at a time to get the free stuff in game. And after that, they had to pay. It's evil. It's evil. It's an evil, evil thing. <laughs> <laughs> the specific example I was talking about is a company called Dopamine Labs. Yeah. That has released these tools to make it a lot easier to sort of include those those reinforcements in, in an app. Yeah. By creating like an API, the developers can just throw a few lines of code in oh, and then man. their thing will pop up at the ideal time. That's horrible. That's horrible. <laughs> Welcome to the future. <laughs> No, you know weirdly who did it first before mobile like mobile phones have mastered it, but online games did it first. World of Warcraft and all that, mm -hmm. just because they the idea it's the first type of game it was the first gaming model where the whole thing worked depended upon people playing it consistently. But if people played it nonstop and got bored, they'd stop. So they have to kind of make make right encourage you to play in the schedule that makes you want to play forever, which is that one. But yeah. Yeah. Ethically grey? But I mean, people feel like they enjoy it, so is that bad? <laughs> um, but it's the kind of enjoyment where you're like, oh, I've just got to finish this thing. <laughs> I hate it. I'm so tired of this of this game job that I work, play at. I mean, I mean, I play. I just need to mine these ores. <laughs> yeah. Um, so what have you been up to this week other than getting sick? Um, you know... Just just avoiding other humans, both to increase and decrease my- Wait. Hang on. Can you taste that? Yeah, I, I, I think I do. Something tastes soapy. I hate it. Hello and welcome to the Tide Podcast, a show within a show that tells you something not to eat every time we do the show. And this week, there is salad panic across America as these Arizona leafy boys- Sa Salad panic? Specifically, romaine lettuce. The CDC is urging people to not eat it, don't buy it, and if you have it, bring it back, take it back, make sure you don't eat it, don't feed it to your boy. Um, these leafy greens have been infected with E. coli. Oh, no. I, when, I, when I plan for this, this bit that I do, I search don't eat on Google News. And every single listing was, <laughs> don't eat this salad. Don't eat romaine lettuce. If you have romaine lettuce, don't eat it. Um, there's an E. coli breakout oh, God. from a, probably a specific batch or something like it, that in um, Arizona. Um, but it's they're so just- un unexpected among food and problems. Like, usually it's like, don't eat soap. Don't eat the stationery. Don't eat bad meat. Don't eat the lettuce. That's the last thing they say. If you're not in America, I'd say you can probably eat the romaine lettuce. But if you're in America and you have any romaine lettuce and you listen to this any time within the next few days after we release it, uh, yeah. <laughs> instead of like next year when you're looking through the back. Forever. For don't eat. Just forever. Never. never. <laughs> so the reason I wanted to bring this up is because one, it's a hot topic in Google News when I search don't eat. Um, don't eat that romaine lettuce. Also, probably just don't eat any salad for a while. Just be on the safe side. It sounds like a it sounds like a horror, like a Netflix horror movie. Kind of like Get Out, but don't eat. <laughs> just like a whole, it's like a comedy horror thriller. Yeah, I mean E. coli is pretty serious. Fifty three people have been infected yeah. by it across sixteen states from this distributor. Um, actually, they haven't identified 
a common distri- a common grower, supplier, distributor, or brand. So it's just all that lettuce. Man, maybe that lettuce just became self aware. Ooh. And decided to sabotage the humans. The reason that this is yeah. interesting is like, what's this going to do for um, the lettuce brand exactly? Like, like, the, like the lettuce lettuce industry. Yeah. When you have headlines that say like salad panic, don't eat the salad. If you have any salad, don't eat it. Um, that doesn't, that's not very good for your brand exactly. Yeah. Well, I mean, big lettuce is going to definitely take a big hit. Yeah. Um they hate that they they they've been working they've been flying under the radar for a long time. You know, doing pulling their strings to get their their um associated thing which makes them into a political force significant. But I mean really when you boil it down like at any moment that could that industry could crumble. It's actually very flimsy. You're literally eating leaves. Like what other leaves do we eat? I don't eat leaves off trees. I don't eat leaves off the ground. Why should I eat leaves that are just a bit crunchier? <laughs> <laughs> and really, I'm just cr- really I'm just chewing up water. Like people are going to start asking these questions, like, especially why would I want to chew up water, especially if it's going to give me a horrible disease. I'm sure there's other crunchy things with more nutrition I could put on my sandwiches. Exactly. So I'm sure they had the lizards, the particular group of lizards who run this um, pyramid. Um, they're going to be scuttling. They'll be crawling up walls, up into trees. I don't know. Licking down flies, stealing reporters who are talking too much. <laughs> the usual thing. So, yeah, I remember uh, a year or two or three or five ago, there was a big lettuce scare in Australia. Mainly, I think mainly just- Like, like we were scared of big lettuce? No, there was a big lettuce scare of um, those bagged salads that you get. Ready to eat one. Like we were scared of really, like really, really large sized lettuce. We were, or like we were very scared of salad for a, a while. Scare that was big. It actually took the industry a while to actually recover from that. I actually did the audio for a conference of the um, like the industries who meet up and talk about it. Um, just talking about how like they're releasing all their new lines of things and doing research and stuff. And what they were talking about is they found that. The research that caused the scare originally for the bagged salad a while ago was done, I think, in England or something like that and wasn't actually really repeatable. It was kind of like they didn't yeah. do the research right or something and they just sort of released information to the media who then like scared everyone. Yeah. Like, don't eat bagged salad. That's really interesting. What I'm hearing is um, one of the other big groups... Big, big news. Le- big, big lettuce has done something behind the scenes. There's some political scandal at play and they're using it to their advantage. And it's probably not an accident. You know what I think it is? Is they're saying, don't eat this romaine lettuce. And this is the government who found out that romaine lettuce makes the people stronger and more woke. And they're trying to stop us from eating that <laughs> that romaine lettuce. That makes sense. It does make um, sense. Because it's, like, it's definitely the... It's either like the news just doing something just for this, like his news just likes to wreck stuff sometimes. Um, it's like the government, but like among foods, what's really, what's got the most to gain out of the removal of lettuce from our sandwiches? Like what really, what, what's another food that competes with lettuce? Or who has the most to gain by people throwing out that lettuce they just bought and having to go buy more next week? The lettuce people, that's who. Big lettuce. Big lettuce. Big lettuce. Ooh, it's a risky play. The the tagline for Salad Panic is the CDC finally gets people interested in lettuce. Yeah, not in a great <laughs> way, CDC. Not in a good way. We well, you know what they say, any publicity is good publicity. It's like saying the some Malaysian plane crash. Oh, people are finally very interested in air travel. Yeah, because a plane crashed. They're searching, can I fly on this plane? Will it, if I fly on this plane, what are the odds that I'll crash? Yeah, well, I mean, research and money probably went into making sure that problem doesn't happen. So, like, the squeaky wheel gets the fix, you know what I mean? Yeah. This let, this lettuce, the, the lettuce industry was like, we're on the edge of making the best lettuce, but no one will give us money. What we need is to make the worst lettuce before we can make the best lettuce. Let us make bad lettuce and then people hopefully people won't leave won't leave maybe the e coli scare is sort of like a cover up for everyone in Arizona realized they didn't really do that good a job of their lettuce and they realized they could do better 
Like when you look back on like anything you've written in the past or like an artwork you did and you're like, hmm, I wish I, I wish I could have done better than that. I can do better than that now. What mm. if we just tell everyone to throw it out and we can get them new lettuce that's even better? This is them trying to get a clean slate. Yeah. Yeah, th- this batch of lettuce wasn't our best work. I think we can do better. <laughs> we just need to erase it from the planet, the face of the planet. <laughs> but I think, I think it actually is... Uh, very infected. Throw out that romaine lettuce. And if you're listening in the future, might as well, better safe than sorry, never eat romaine lettuce again. If you are listening in the future, we are curious. Um, send us a message from the future. Yeah, what's it like? Is the romaine lettuce still a thing? Did it work? Did they come back? Is there a new lettuce? Perhaps a big lettuce? There's a, there's a world of opportunities for crunchy leaves. What if they what if they literally started growing like like maybe if they made a tree which you could eat the leaves off then you could grow your own lettuce in your yard on a tree I mean you could grow it in your yard on a lettuce but imagine growing it on a tree though <laughs> can- uh, how cool would that be ah oh, the future it's bright also it's bioluminescent who knows oh my god the future is amazing and I can't wait to get there but for now that's it for the Tide podcast I need a tree which grows both lettuce and tomatoes on it. And I just sort of go, get some bread and go, clap, and then I have a sandwich. (laughs) I'm like, this is perfect. Welcome back to the But Yeah podcast, and thanks for listening. Um, We like that you come and listen every week, even if we derail and go into a completely different show within a show. It's important, showception. We hope you've been enjoying season two as we try and sort of improve things. Uh, It was a bit of a weird week this week. I'm moving house, so I'm still like right on the edge of being organized for anything. And everything's just, this is the tired part of the year. All those diseases bouncing around, all that activity, all that motion, all that work. Uh, so if you want to talk to us, you can tweet us um, at But Yeah Pod. If you want to help us out, you can go on iTunes, find But Yeah on there, and leave us a rating and a nice comment. And we really appreciate it. You give us those good stars. You can also email us, buttyearpod at gmail.com, or visit our Facebook group where I do these really cool polls throughout the week related to the episode, or when we're planning an episode, sometimes I'll throw one of those up. Facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash but yeah. And we also have an Instagram, which is the same sort of same basic spiel, you know, at But Yeah Pod. Um, that's our Instagram. That covers it. That's going to do it. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time. Have a good. Stay crispy. Stay crispy.